Your Excellency, Ministers, both of the Executive and of Religion, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, so much has been said already in the past seven days of Her Majesty the late Queen Elizabeth II. Tributes have rightly flowed freely from around the world. I don't want to repeat the words of others, so I will have to start by repeating my own words. Here in Gibraltar, we were all very clear. We were her rock, and she was ours. That phrase has connotations beyond the geological, of course. A rock of support, not just a limestone. Because she was our own strength and stay when we faced adversity. Never more so than in the closed frontier years, or at the febrile time of the referendum and the restrictions. She always personified the crown to which we pledge allegiance and from which we derive our sovereignty and strength. Many of us must have seen her image in our minds as we debated the vexed issue of the sovereignty of Gibraltar. Whenever we say we are British, how many of us didn't see her in our mind's eye as the Britannia to which we pledged our loyalty? I have no doubt that Queen Elizabeth II was the modern embodiment of Britannia in many a mind's eye. Even the embodiment of cool Britannia in her stints with 007 and that funny Peruvian bear who popped into Buckingham Palace and stole her marmalade sandwiches. And in her official duties, we never heard her give us an opinion. She didn't need to give us an opinion. She spoke through the leadership of her example. I think that to understand who we have lost, we must nonetheless also go behind the crown and the sovereign. We need to reflect on the emotive tributes of her closest family members, sons, daughter, grandchildren. Each of them have shared moving reflections of a mother and a grandmother, of a woman who loved them like we all love our own family members. For the global icon to have done such a magnificent job of loving her own family in such a fulfilling and thereby ordinary way, just like we all love our loved ones, that, more than anything else, speaks to a soul strong in greatness. Fame distorts so many less famous people. Riches distort so many less rich people. And power, such as it may be today in a constitutional monarchy, distorts the emotions of so many less powerful leaders. None distorted her. For that reason, none would dispute former Prime Minister Boris Johnson's proposed epitaph of Elizabeth the Great for Her Late Majesty. But we may all agree that the move by Lords and Members of Parliament in London to record Her Majesty for posterity as Elizabeth the Faithful may be the best epitaph of all. For beyond her deep religious faith, her faith to her family, to her nations, and to her people, that was the truest mark of her greatness. Her faith to our values, to our constitutions, and our armed forces marked our great respect for our late queen. Her faithful discharge of her commitment to service marked her great reign. Elizabeth the Faithful, a fitting epitaph beyond faith, just like we were her rock beyond much more than just geology. Rest in eternal peace, dear faithful sovereign.
Your faithful people of the rock will forever mourn your passing. God save the King.